M. Welcome to this special Power Breakfast session, Technology Password to Inclusive Growth, a Cisco initiative in collaboration with CNBC TV 18. Today, technology lies at the core of accelerating inclusive economic growth, creating more meaningful jobs, and achieving sustainable development. According to the McKinsey Global Institute, 1 trillion US dollars in GDP by 2025, that is the potential addition to the economy that's possible due to disruptive technologies. India, of course, is no different. We've had a significant policy push with Prime Minister Narendra Modi launching the Digital India mission three years ago. Today, 35% of Indians have access to the internet. Mobile phone users have crossed the 650 million mark, although only about half of them are on smartphones right now, hence able to access digital services. The Internet of Things industry in India is set to grow to 940 billion US dollars by 2020 as per the Department of Electronics and IT. Therefore, the good intent is still uh, needed and uh, the intent is there. It needs to be followed by execution and follow through by all stakeholders. And that's why we are here to discuss and chalk out that roadmap today. And we're joined by eminent experts who will talk on the theme, technology, password to inclusive growth. I'd like to welcome the moderator of the session, CNBC TV 18's managing editor, Shireen Bhan, on stage. And now for our eminent panelists, Chuck Robbins, chairman and CEO of Cisco Systems. Dilip Ajbay, MD and CEO, National Payments Corporation of India. C. Vijay Kumar, CEO of HCL Technologies. Ajay Prakash Sahani, Secretary, Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology. And Dr. Naresh Trehan, CMD of Medanta Medicine. I think Ritu set the context for what we are here to discuss. Uh, there's been a lot of talk around the digital economy. There's been a lot of talk on how we can leverage technology uh, to make... Uh, uh, government services more accessible to bring down costs, drive down costs across different sectors and we've started to see that happen in a very meaningful way, especially in the last few years. So let me start by uh, by getting comments in from Chuck. Chuck, uh, A, you've been a frequent visitor to India. We last chatted when you were here in April and I remember you said that the, your fundamental belief is that technology will not just solve India's problems but also truly realize its potential. Uh, Cisco has been a long-term investor in India. You've been here for about 23 years. India is now crucial as part of your new strategy, which is basically subscription and software driven. Uh, in today's context, where do you see the story and what do you believe could be the next steps as we move forward? Well, first of all, thanks for having me today. And uh, we have been here for 23 years. And it, India is perhaps the country where we have the the broadest 360 degree relationship and partnership here. We, we obviously have a significant number of software engineers who are here. We obviously serve a lot of customers. We've been very active in helping build out some of the, you know, the most robust uh, mobile IP networks uh, here in the country, uh, as well as really lining up our investments mm -hmm. against the, the strategies of the country relative to how to leverage technology to not only solve the problems that exist, but also to realize the opportunities that exist. And we started a few years ago with a digital, a digital uh, initiative called Country Digital Acceleration. And we lined up against the initiatives of Digital India, Skills India, Make in India, and Cybersecurity. And we have been uh, uh, very active. We've had 55 projects going in six different states. Uh, and lots of work in cyber, smart cities, etc. But I believe that the most important thing we can do is continue to accelerate uh, cost-effective, high-speed internet access, high-speed broadband access to every person in this country because that is truly how you give opportunity. And once you have that, then you can extend educational opportunities, you can extend health care into rural areas, you can do virtually anything. So that to me is the number one priority and to do that obviously with security in mind. 
Absolutely. Uh, just to take that point forward before I get to our other panelists as well, uh, you were responsible uh, along with Reliance uh, for setting up the uh, GOIP based network, uh, perhaps the fastest rollout anywhere in the world. Uh, as we now look at a future that's moving towards 5G, uh, and while there is still some degree of uncertainty on the 5G rollout here in India from a policy perspective, but do you believe that that is going to be the next lever, uh, the next tipping point to really take this data story forward? Forward. Yeah, first of all, I think what GEO has done relative to the pace, the scale, and the cost of the services that are being delivered is, is, is unparalleled and unprecedented around the world, and we've been honored to be a partner in helping build that out. What 5G will allow us to do, number one, it's very high performance, very low latency, and it allows us to get high-speed access into areas of the country and into pe to people and villages where the time frame to deliver fiber or terrestrial mm. connections could be prohibitive. So what 5G is really going to do here is it should give us the ability to deliver high-speed, low-latency access to virtually every location in the country, which once you have that, then you can, and, and, and you can then deliver incredibly high-performance applications. We're working primarily on ensuring that that people understand what's possible with 5G. So really focusing on showcasing the use cases, but for all of the carriers here, as they begin to look at their spectrum and, mm. and their 5G deployment, then we would uh, expect to partner with them to think about the architectures for these next generation networks to actually accommodate, because it's gonna create a, t a lot of traffic, and it's gonna require incredibly high performance core networks to support all that bandwidth at the edge. Right. Mr. Shani, let me just take that point across to you. I mean, uh, Digital India has, uh, what, about nine pillars uh, that, that the government has sort of set out in terms of targets that it hopes to achieve. Uh, while you know, we've made a lot of progress. There have been issues, especially when it comes to uh, the fiber rollout, which has missed many of its deadlines and its targets. Now, as we look at a 5G future, do you believe that we are going to be able to realize the true potential? A, given the fact that, uh, you know, government spending is perhaps going to be a little more restricted uh, at this point in time, given the many priorities that, uh, that we have and the fiscal constraints, and the private sector finds itself looking at uh, constrained balance sheets as well. I think the core infrastructure for us is a very high priority and uh, investments will continue in uh, both in fiber and in uh, 5G. We've had an excellent uh, interministerial uh, group uh, and with eminent uh, scholars and researchers also joining in and mm. the industry joining in uh, to also uh, chalk out uh, a framework for 5G rollout, starting with the uh, pilots, uh, you know, such as the one uh, uh, Chuck has uh, mentioned. So in both of these, we should see a fair amount of uh, investment. We are also again looking at how to incentivize investment, how to reduce the pain, uh, whatever pain <laughs> there is currently uh, in the system. And uh, I think taking uh, technology to uh, everyone in India is uh, an article of faith for us. We have the ability to achieve uh, many things with, uh, with an Indian kind of uh, model. Mm. Uh, we, the march of technologies helps us uh, skip uh, a, a generation or okay. two in technology. Right. And uh, the next ones always uh, prove to be uh, more cost effective. Uh, a quicker rollout and uh, I think we have uh, tremendous faith in the new technologies that are coming in mm. to help us uh, step up the pace. So what's the target for, for say year end uh, that you've, you have in mind? I think the very first target is to complete what we have set out uh, um, doing uh, which is to take fiber to every gram panchayat and uh, by uh, March of uh, 2019 to accomplish uh, most of uh, that, take fiber to Gram Panchayats. March 2019, every Gram Panchayat will 
be connected in that, some form of fashion that is the target that is that is the target uh, dilip asbe at the npci let me come to you because I, i want to pick up on the point that we just heard there from mr shani that we're probably going to leap a generation on the back of uh, frugal innovation and uh, and uh, technology changes and i think what's happened in the fintech space in india is an example of that uh, we since fiscal year 2009 seen a uh, sort of growth as far as this space is concerned but it's grown exponentially uh, in the last few years i mean we're now talking about whatsapp pay and google pay and whether they eventually will start operations in india google has but whatsapp i'm not so sure maybe you can throw some light on that but give me a sense of of uh, what what we can now realistically expect uh, given the fact that we've already seen so much progress no and uh, as rightly said by other panelists now we are seeing a, we are very for an explosion now in the digital payments as far as payments is concerned and now i'll tell you a very simple reason is because consumer is able to do a transaction in 3 seconds 5 seconds so mm. that has dramatically changed the consumer experience to the digital payments otherwise earlier he has to even to complete an internet payment uh, internet banking transaction he has to spend 30 seconds 40 seconds that time has cut down to 110 right and it's all because of the high speed uh, you know the 4g networks right. the 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 technology if you look at you uh, the progressive countries like uk us most of the services now are on mobile right, right. so the service services are now uh, provided by rendered by mobile and i think india is on the path right in next 2 years you will see everything which is you can think of is is to be ordered from mobile we have a whole pipeline of products that will allow the capacity at the core that is really needed i wouldn't think for a technology company we wouldn't look at uh just the market potential of india i think the the way we should look at it is what is the impact the talent from india can create mm. in the global market Okay, I want to talk to you because you know we've seen this sort of move towards digitization uh, driving sectors and it is sector agnostic today uh, even if i were to look at what's happening at your company at hcl tech specifically uh, you've gone from what about 18% of your revenues from digital to about 23% currently and you believe that that is only going to continue to grow uh, what's the trajectory looking like yeah uh, so from our perspective uh, i mean while we service a lot of global customers Uh, we work on technology transformation and digital transformation for our clients a lot of technology delivery happens out of india uh, almost 75% of our technology talent is is from india and uh, so it's really a very very strategic opportunity for us mm. uh, especially for all the technology service companies because pretty much every business is getting Uh, reimagined or reinvented with technology at yeah. the core yeah. and whether it is artificial intelligence machine learning ar vr iot every conceivable technology 3d printing mm. is uh, is really creating humongous opportunities to reinvent the business uh, but uh, a lot of companies which are digital native they have uh, relatively uh, been quicker to adopt technology right. to really make a, a significantly better business outcomes and business experience but some of the larger businesses globally are continue to be they feel they challenged about how can they change the business model mm. how can they in a very very agile and collaborative manner uh, adopt new technologies to change right. and that's where we are helping and that's what is driving our growth you know you know i want to pick up on a comment that chuck had made to me when we spoke in april he said that india is strategic for cisco because it is the base for many of their corporate assets but it's also an amazing market uh, you know how does that play out then for somebody like you uh, what is the market potential uh, for someone like you I think from our perspective the the way i see it is the i mean it's it's i i wouldn't think for a technology company we wouldn't look at uh, just the market potential of india i think the the way we should look at it is what is the impact the talent from india can create mm. in the global market you know one of the biggest schemes that the government is now hoping to launch which is the ayushman bharat health insurance program a lot of that is based on getting the technology right to ensure that leakages uh, are restrained uh, to ensure that the beneficiaries are actually the ones who who deserve to get the benefits of of the scheme etc but outside of what the government can do with healthcare what is technology meant for a sector like yours in being able to make it more accessible and affordable so in healthcare 
we have been technology suckers for a long, long time. Now we are going back 40, 50 years when we really leveraged technology to go through different stages to help the patient, to help us to make the diagnostics better. So then we moved it from different areas to patient's bedside. So we all, that the, uh, the point was coined that point of care. Yeah. So you are actually by the bedside getting the entire information about a patient when you are actually mm. delivering the care. Mm. So that led to EMR, electronic medical record, so that you could all, as the ability to, of storage grew and became cheaper yeah. and connectivity became cheaper, then we did started doing remote medicine, like we have EICUs now. Everybody, every small hospital does not have have to have an expert intensive care person because we actually deliver the care remotely. So this is an incremental thing that has happened. Now right. coming back to what you said about we are in the era of Ayushman uh, Bharat. Bharat uh, yes. What is required today? We feel that 50% of the patients don't need to be touched anymore because technology has made it possible for us to remotely actually diagnose it and quite accurately, I mean, you take skin diseases, you know, we have the, the lenses which you can, the remote physician can actually do. So you are actually multiplying the expertise because we are short of doctors also. Mm. So one doctor sitting in one location can be treating patients from a, re, from a region. Right. So this is, a, in a way, miraculous to say that we will be practicing medicine not from the bedside all the time, but as time goes on and 5G comes in and we get more and more connectivity, the tools are actually ready. Okay, excellent. We've got one question here. Go ahead. I'm Dr. Subhi Chaturvedi. I lead the S Global Institute. My question's to you, Chuck. What would be your top three hours? We've got Government of India on the panel for a conducive, stable, predictable, investment-friendly, innovation-friendly policy and regulatory ecosystem. And how do you see 5G deployment with artificial intelligence lead to inclusive growth for India? I think at a high level what I'll say on the policy front is that whether it's AI or machine learning or data privacy or cross-border data flows, uh, the technology is moving so rapidly that I think it's going to require trusted public-private partnerships to actually make the, the right policy decisions. And at the end of the day, it's the, it's the, uh, owner, the, the government controls what the decision ultimately is. So what we're trying to do is really try to be a neutral educational vehicle to try to share what we know about how things are moving in the context of how it should influence policy. Relative to AI and the implications on 5G, et cetera, I think the early phases of 5G, we have a multi-year build out where it, it, is, it is simply about leveraging this new technology to provide access to, to people in, that ha, would no, not have had it otherwise to areas of the country that would not have had it otherwise so that we can deliver basic capabilities like education and healthcare and those things. And that, that's where I think the focus is going to be over the next few years. Yeah, I am Deepak Chanduka from Department of Telecom. I'm DDG Special Projects. My question is to Chuck. I mean, you talked about the use case for 5G and all uh, those lab setups are being done. So my question is, since various releases in 5G, like this 14, 15, they are going to come in 2019, 20, and the entire roadmap is extending up to 2022. So what is the plan from uh, Cisco regarding product development? Because already we are doing the use case setups and the lab setups. So what products are going to be part of these labs when the release itself are going to come in subsequent years? And at what cost also, uh, I mean, these products okay. are going to come? Product pipeline for 5G and at what cost? The primary role that we will play in 5G is helping the service providers build the next generation high performance network core infrastructure to support the capacity that's needed at the edge from the macro radio networks. We don't have, we don't play in the macro radio space. So once the packets hit the network, then our responsibility is to provide the products to do that. So our pipeline is, we've been working on some very high performance, low latency, uh, low power usage, increased density solutions that will be coming out. We've talked about these uh, 
quite publicly over the last year or so, so that we have a whole pipeline of products that will allow the capacity at the core that is really needed. The second thing that we're, that there's two other key areas I'd mentioned that we're going to be very involved with. Number one is helping facilitate and orchestrate the delivery of services across that network. How do we, how do we help, you know, uh, ensure that if we want to run a healthcare application or we want to deliver healthcare services over that, making sure that the networks are accommodating and providing slicing and capabilities relative to 5G to prioritize that, et cetera. And then the third big one is, is the end-to-end -end security that's going to be required. Mm. And we have uh, a lot of work going on from a standards body perspective as well as product uh, pipeline in the security area as well. Do not underestimate the power of the younger generation. With new technologies come new opportunities. We believe that at least 50% of population should be transacting digitally in five years time. Data and privacy need to be handled in a very, very responsible manner. We need to come up with solutions which are much cheaper than we have today.